and clomiphene versus clomid, clomiphene citrate. Is it ready for prime time? Is it ready for use? This is going to be a very important video because even I'm going to change my mind, possibly after this time. Let's start and roll the sleeves up with what is Clomid, because this drug is a trans isomer of Clomid. Let's get into the science here, guys. It's very, very cool. So Clomid is a selective estrogen receptor modulator that was cleared by the FDA all the way back in 1967 for female infertility. It's been around for a long time. We know it works. It works for men. It works for women. And how does it work? We, we know this in part, right? So it blocks receptors, estrogenic receptors in the hypothalamus. And when you block these receptors with Clomid for a man, what's going to happen is the body's going to respond with an increased signal down to the anterior pituitary, and it's going to increase FSH and LH. That's going to stimulate your testicles, serotonin, and Leydig cells to produce increased testosterone and semen. Voila! Now, it's not so easy, right, guys? Because we know with Clomid, it definitely works. And some men, I think the natty virgin guys that have not been exposed to androgens, it can definitely work for them. But who lives on it for more than a couple years at best and then has to go on testosterone? That's the truth. And that's what we see. And of course, there's no studies on this because no one seems to care. I can't believe it. Hopefully those times are going to change. But let's go back to the chemistry of Clomid and where N-Clomiphene comes from. Clomid, Clomiphene citrate, generic form, is made up of two stereoisomers, euclomiphene and N-Clomiphene. Now listen to this. What's going on here, I think, is that, because some people say it's really a better drug, right? It's just a better, well-tolerated drug for men. So the N-clomiphene stereoisomer is the trans isomer, which means that it's got the same atoms, for an example, across a double bond, but instead of being on the same side, they're on opposite sides. That's all it is. And that in the world of of biochemistry and in chemistry itself, in medicine, has a different effect. The other stereoisomer that's at play here, that's made up of Clomid, is euclomiphene, as I mentioned. It's possible and probable that this aspect, this stereoisomer, has the bad side effects, the estrogenic side effects, and indeed, if you look at the literature and you read across the board and talk to some of the experts with these drugs, it looks like the euclomiphene stereoisomer may be responsible for the antagonistic and for the poor, undesirable side effects of Clomid. There it is. I just learned this. This is fascinating to me. So enclomiphene is potentially stronger and more pure form, unlike Clomid, where it works in the hypothalamus to block estrogenic receptors, therefore stimulating the anterior pituitary, LH, FSH, and you, as a man, will have increased testosterone and maintain fertility. And clomiphene is not FDA cleared. I can't believe it. And... There's a company that actually looked into this. I believe it was 2015 or 2016, and the FDA said, no, where are we at with this? I can't find any data. Where are we at? Can you guys help me with this? Where are we at with the FDA clearance with N-clomiphene? It can be used off-label, sure, but what's going on with this? Why isn't it cleared for men? I need to know this. 2016, N-clomiphene is FDA cleared for ovarian dysfunction in women. There we go again. Another drug cleared for women. Of course, we have data for this. Here's the data. So 
Here's evidence-based article from 2016, and clomiphene citrate for the treatment of secondary male hypogonadism. Expert opinion, pharmacology. It's a great article. And the article definitely shows that there is potential for this and that men had positive response, increased testosterone, maintained spermatogenesis and semen, testicles are not atrophied, and they felt well. Now, these, these are limited articles, okay? So where is the year's worth of data for this? There's no question that we don't have it. So this is now on the cutting bleeding edge, even for me. I see potentially two uses of n clomiphene absolutely utilized for men that have low testosterone and that are candidates for treatment of testosterone, however, are young and they don't want to suffer the problems with fertility. And also, we have that testicular atrophy issue for men that are on androgens. That's it. That's the focus. And the next one, when it comes down to me being the anabolic doc, I wonder, can we utilize this as a true limited post-cycle therapy, limited post-cycle therapy as an androgenic alternative for men that are suffering with anabolic steroids. That's the anabolic recovery. And I do this all the time, but we don't have really any agents that really work so well because when you've been exposed to androgens for a period of time, be it months or years, there is a change in the brain. And I don't care what PCT you, you do. I don't care if it's a Clomid or Tamoxifen or even HCG or any regimen at all. There's going to be after effect and aftermath that you have to be off everything. And is your brain and your testicles coming back together to provide your brain with satisfactory androgen levels so you feel good? You guys got to follow me on this. I know it's a little complicated, but I think you can understand it. So in the end, is it going to be good for men on testosterone and how long? I've seen men, I have men right now that are on Clomid. Yeah, of course I'm going to consider switching to N-Clomiphene. I have to get my feet more into this, guys. Give me comments. Are you on Clomid or N-Clomiphene? I need to know why. Exact dosing looks like 12.5 to 25 milligrams and clomiphene a day. We need to know more about this. Your experiences, your side effects. How long have you been on n -clomiphene? Or specify Clomid. Because I've seen men on Clomid for three years. Many men like this. And even up to five years. Of course, I've had men come to me that are on Clomid three to five years. Nothing more, but that's incredible. Five years. And they'd said, Doc, time to tap out. It's not working anymore. This is Clomid. And it's time to transition to real testosterone. So that's my question. And thank you for staying with me on this. Is it worth it? What do you do? Do you go on these agents? Is this really the new, stronger, better, sexier, more sustainable CIRM? Is it? Time will tell. I really hope this helps, gentlemen, once and for all. This is always going to go on asking the questions and bouncing it off you and getting the comments right here in this channel. So thank you so much. I really hope this helps young men that are not on anything yet to make a decision for themselves. Thank you.